It's Ash from Super Videos back for another video for Season 10 of The Walking Dead. In this video we're going to look at the official synopsis for Season 10 which was recently revealed and also the character bios for Season 10 characters. The information I'm going to go through come from AMC and Skybound but I'm going to read the article that's on Skybound. So first we're going to look at the Season 10 synopsis. Prepare for the return of The Walking Dead with the AMC's official season 10 synopsis, The Walking Dead is a story that started 10 years ago with one man trying to find his family. The family grew and gradually communities took shape. They fought and survived, thrived and gave birth to a new generation. It is a tale of humankind and there are more stories to tell. So right off the bat, I absolutely loved that kind of summary because in a way, if you haven't even seen The Walking Dead, this pretty much gives you a description of what happened. And it gets you caught up in a way if you don't want to spend the time watching. The two things that I thought was pretty interesting that they included, one man trying to find his family. That's of course Rick Grimes trying to find his family. They fought and survived, thrived and gave birth to a new generation. That's the part that I thought was interesting. A new generation at this point, we know that this is specifically targeted towards characters like Judith, RJ, and other characters that are kids in the world of The Walking Dead who may not even remember the old world. There are more stories to tell, so just a plug that we're not done quite yet, which is pretty cool. Now, I'm going to jump into the second paragraph. It is now spring, a few months after the end of season 9. So this confirms, again, that we're going to see a time jump of a few months from the end of Season 9 to Season 10. So of course at the end of Season 9, we were getting to winter. So after a few months, now it's spring. So they basically skipped over winter. When our group of survivors dared to cross into Whisper's territory during the harsh winter. And that was of course the event of the finale of Season 9. The collected communities are still dealing with the after effects of Alpha's horrific display of power. Of course, referring to the Heads on Pike scene and the massacre there, reluctantly respecting the new borderlines being imposed on them, all while organizing themselves into a militia-style fighting force, preparing for a battle that may be unavoidable. So this reveals two things. One is that they are for now respecting the borders, which we kind of knew from the end of season 9, but also they are organizing themselves into a militia style of fighting force. That's very interesting, which makes sense. It's realistic for them to kind of mature their militias into a more organized militia than a random kind of one that we've seen in the past. And also based on what we've already seen in the trailers and teasers and pictures, we know that they're going to be organizing and training at the ocean side specifically. The other thing this reveals is they're preparing for a battle that's unavoidable. And that obviously makes sense if we're just looking at the comic stuff. We know there's going to be a conflict with the Whispers that's going to be right around the corner. So they're kind of preparing themselves for that. The third paragraph reads, but the Whispers are a threat unlike they have ever faced. Backed by a massive horde of the dead, it is seemingly a fight they cannot win. Seemingly a fight they cannot win. They have this in here for a reason, I think. There's a chance that they might be able to win the war or the fight if they are smart about it, which it seems like they are. The question of what to do and the fear it breeds will infect the communities and give rise to paranoia, propaganda, secret agendas and infighting that will test them as individuals and as a society. So paranoia, this goes back to what they've already told us that some characters are going to be paranoid, they're going to have fear in them even during times when there is no reason to fear. Characters like Carol and Sadiq will have some of that, maybe even Rosita. Uh, propaganda that goes to the theme of the better part of the first few episodes which is basically characters spray painting the messages on the walls that's propaganda if you think about it and the messages are silence the whispers secret agendas that's interesting not sure what to make of that and infighting that will test them as individuals and as a society so this is hinting that we might see a kind of civil war maybe not a full-fledged civil war like we've kind of talked about before but maybe just some rogue 
characters here and there trying to do their own thing and not necessarily being in line with the other individuals and with the leadership. The very idea of whether civilization can survive in a world filled with the dead hangs in the balance. So it's still a story about survival, which makes sense, but they're kind of going towards a new direction, which is not only surviving, but rebuilding society and rebuilding civilization. So that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to go to another article also on Skybound about the character bios for season 10. Now I think it's very interesting that they chose these individuals specifically. They didn't have everyone in there. They have a selected few, which I thought was interesting. Daryl Dixon, although a lone wolf at heart, Daryl is loyal beyond measure. Watching Carol struggle with her grief and anger causes Daryl great concern while his sense of duty to the communities is heightened with the rules imposed by the whispers. He inherently understands everyone has done and has to continue to do horrible things to survive. Daryl's insight of knowing when to evade or attack, observe or act, listen or command illustrates not only his fighting style, but his strength of character as well. How will Daryl's wisdom serve him? and those around him. Will the walls begin to close in, making him once again feel trapped and claustrophobic? Will he revert to his caged animal approach to survival? Or will he accept his new normal and perhaps start living beyond today? So the two things that they really focus on is his connection to Carol and how what Carol is going through shapes or impacts Daryl. And the other thing is how Daryl has to kind of shift from lone survivor and going towards a character who can lead a little bit more and he's thinking about tomorrow and he's basically living beyond today, which they have here as well. Then we have Carol Pelletier. Carol continues to be devastated by the death of her son Henry, haunted by loss and to further guard herself. Carol left her husband Ezekiel She's in a push-pull state of wanting to separate from everyone and everything and seeing revenge on the mother that took her child. What is she capable of doing in order to erase the events of her past? What more is she willing to leave behind? And how might her actions affect the ones she loves? So of course the biggest focus here is Carol's grief and how she is basically devastated by Henry's death and trying to deal with that. Now, there are some common wording that's used here that basically represents Carol as a whole. She's always had to go through grief and she's always had to figure out how far she's willing to go to survive and make sure that the people that she loves survive. So this goes back to that. Also, it's going to be interesting to see whether this time it's going to be a similar type of thing or whether we're going to see something slightly different with Carol. But the other thing that I want to focus on here that I absolutely love that they have is this sentence right here. Seeking revenge on the mother that took her child. I think that the wording there is very interesting. Alpha and Carol are mothers and both have a child that they're trying to protect. And I think that's going to be a key kind of message or theme for season 10 when it comes to the showdown between Carol and Alpha. Michonne, Michonne continues to be the strong strategic thinker she has been since before the post-apocalyptic world. Her pendulum has swung from staunchly independent to a pessimistic protector to having faith in humanity, but always squarely grounded in what is for the greater good and safety of her family and the communities. Michonne innately knows Alpha has all the power and they must abide by her rules for now because revenge will get everyone killed. Michonne wants to dismantle Alpha's power. She's teaching Judith how to strategically attack an enemy. She must equip her daughter and her son for their future in their dead world. That's a pretty cool bio, very interesting. Two main things that I thought was very interesting that they focused on is that for now, Michonne is following Alpha's rules and the Whisperer's rules, but obviously she's not going to continue following their rules. That's one thing. And also she's trying to be strategic about it. She's trying to 
teach Judith and RJ how to strategically attack the enemy and dismantle Alpha's power. So she's pretty much trying to do in a way what they already did with Negan. But obviously this time it's going to be a little bit different and maybe it's going to come back to haunt them. So it's not going to work quite the same this time. But I thought that was two very interesting things that they focused on there. Then we have Eugene Porter still in love with Rosita. Eugene is once again the odd man out living in her affection and attention behind Gabriel with whom she's in a relationship and Sadiq the father of her child. Eugene is lonely and wants to be in a relationship. He analyzes his actions with Rosita with the same vigor he problem solves for the communities. Both involves many people with different opinions. Both are life and death. His decisions could severely alter everyone's way of life. And as I've said before, I think Gabriel and also Eugene are going to be or they're going to play a big part in the next story arc that's going to be coming up with the Commonwealth. And I think they're planting the seeds for that. We have Rosita Espinosa. Rosita has given birth to a baby girl named Socorro aka Coco which means help and nothing could ring more true for Rosita. She's learning it takes a village to raise a child. Rosita is trying to find the balance between being a vigilant soldier, a responsibility in which she's skilled and confident, and adjusting to being a new mom, an unfamiliar and unknown role. So we've seen Rosita boxing, training to get her ready for the Whispers conflict, but at the same time she's a mother so she has to take care of her child. So those kind of work in opposite ways she's gonna have to find a way to balance those two roles which is very interesting gabriel stokes gabriel is in a position of power he has not been in since the world and his parish fell he trusts himself and the communities trust him he believes in the charter and he holds great hope for the future of the joint communities he's in a relationship with rosita and is navigating the parental waters with Sadiq and Eugene. As Alpha tightens her hold, Gabriel's compassion is tested and his moral compass challenged. So every time someone becomes a moral compass, we fear for their life. And I think it's going to be a similar thing this time. I think based on what they have here, Gabriel's compassion is tested and his moral compass challenged. We might be seeing a scenario where he has to decide whether to go beyond his boundaries in order to save someone or sacrifice himself and not go over those boundaries to save the people that he loves. Aaron. Aaron has not healed from the loss of Jesus and the tragic events of the fair. He will not let his guard down again. He has become a strong leader and no longer has the talk first mentality. That's interesting. Raising Gracie has filled him with purpose and fight as he trains the militia to protect their communities. So it seems like he's going to be in charge for training the militia and for getting them ready for the conflict. He realizes there is no right or wrong in this world, just protecting your loved ones at whatever the cost. His survivor's guilt now has an outlet for release. So we might be seeing some cool stuff with Aaron and we might see a different side of Aaron that we've not seen maybe ever. If you like what you see, press like, subscribe for more content, and press the bell button to receive notifications for daily uploads.